have you ever felt awkward when you want to remarry and you need to introduce your children to a step parent or when your partner is a widow or a widower and you're being introduced to us to the stepchildren today we are highlighting on how to peacefully coexist with the stepchildren and guiding on the best way to go about it if you need any assistance or support kindly reach out through my contact below my name is Rachel Mbogo. Welcome to Heart Heart Clinic. If you have not subscribed, kindly click the red button. Let's connect. Today we are looking at step parenting and how to peacefully coexist with the stepchildren. Remarrying after death of a partner is common and even the scripture allows it. 1 Timothy 5 verse 14. How comes then coexisting becomes unbearable? The way parents introduce their, their new spouse to their children matters a lot. Most parents would rather not discuss this matter in fear of rejection or even being told not to, to remarry. Others would rather introduce their spouse as friend, auntie, for example. Hello, Ken. This is Auntie Alice. She will be living with us. All these are genuine reasons, but they do not make situation better. The best approach depends depending on the child age is as below introduce the idea have a discussion and introduce the partner at first the children may react differently depending on their age and the level of understanding and also the healing level after the loss of a parent warning if your children are deeply wounded by the loss of their parent they will burst out in anger and it's not the right time for you to keep pushing this idea of remarrying. Seek counseling services for them and later revisit the topic. Proceeding with marriage at this point creates a lot of resentment, not only to you, but also to your partner, making the coexistence become unbearable and almost impossible. Be ready to answer questions that may arise. For example, why can't you wait a little bit longer before you remarry? Dad, did you really love mom? Or mom, did you really love dad? A counselor at this particular time will be of great help to help you answer this question. You may reach out to my uh, you may reach out to a counselor and I am a counselor for those services that will be able to be guided at exact words or exact way to respond to such question. So I said you first introduce the idea. Then how do you introduce the idea? I don't think remarrying is just a one-time shopping where you just go to a supermarket and pick a partner and go. There is a process, and we call it a dating process. Walk the dating journey with your children. How do you start this? After they've lost their, their loved one or their parent, it is important to ask the children, by the way, Jane, or by the way, Ken, would you like to have another mother? Or would you like to have another daddy? Would you like mom to remarry? Or would you like dad to remarry? This is how you introduce the idea. Don't insist of immediate answer. Allow them to think about it. You can pick up this discussion later, but you have thrown your idea. Give these children time to negotiate internally. And maybe later, they can come and tell you, I don't think that is the right time to remarry. Or who would be your preferred partner? No, but just give them, throw that idea into them. Just asking, would you like to see mom? Another mom, would you like to see another dad in your life? This helps them to think through. After that the idea is thrown into their hearts, they will go think through and later they can come with ideas. I said number two, you can have a discussion. It is important to set a timeline and say, I have something that you'd like us to discuss. You remember that time I asked you whether you'd like, you'd like to have another mom in your life or another dad in your life? Can we discuss it in such and such a time? Maybe after a month or maybe after a week or in today's evening. Can you think about it? Then we can discuss it in the evening. From your previous talk, what is your take in having a stepmom or a stepdad or a step parent? Let's refer them to allow both parties, that is the parent and the children, to present their case. What is needed and what are their fears? Because in this case, they will tell you, 
But I thought, Dad, we were okay. I thought, Dad, you loved our mom. Why would you bring another mom? Allow them to do. Because that is why we're saying, have a discussion. In fact, a discussion is just not a bruddosing everything I'm going to marry and take it or leave it. No. Discussion is allowing them to share. That as a parent, you'll be able to say, the reason why I would love another mom is because I would love to have a companion. I would love to have a partner. Or I'd love to have someone take care of you. You know, when like you, you, when you go to school, I'm left here all alone. Or when you're here for holiday and have no one to take care of you, I feel so bad. So allow yourself as a parent to express your need. And also allow the children also to express their fears or their needs. Some will say, we're excited at leaving yourself someone who will take care of us. Some will ask, did you really love mom or did you really love dad? And this is a point that you explain to the children. I really did love your parent. Or I did I really did love ma your mom or your dad. But at this particular time, we have to allow mom or dad to rest. And because she or he cannot come back to life, we have to get to know how to adjust our lives to be able to still meet our daily needs. The third thing I said is introduce the partner. How do you introduce the partner? From the idea you threw. This is how you introduce the partner. By the way, Ken, or by the way, Jane, what do you think of Auntie so-and-so? You can say Auntie Lillian, depending with your partner's name, or Uncle Junior, depending with the name that you prefer. And you allow these children to think through, oh, we've met Auntie Jane during that activity. Oh, Auntie Jane came to visit the other time. Having a discussion helps you to get to an agreement and also get a plan. Introduce your partner. After having a discussion and having an agreement, you can plan on introducing your partner to the children. Allow them to ask question too. And by the way, who is Auntie Jane? What is your other name? Where do you come from? Do you have children? Would you like to stay with us? Those are the kind of questions that children will ask. When all these parties are reading from the same script, then the coexistence becomes a very smooth journey and you'll be able to start from a peaceful and respectful perspective. Two, as a new parent in this household, please do not rush to make changes. Please don't. You're here rearranging the house, or oh, the table should face right. You're removing the photos of their, their left parent. If it's the dad who passed on and they had a wall hanging of the family with the dad, you're there dismantling the photo. No, 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 no. Do not, do not remove any photos. Demanding to be called a mom or a dad. Mm -mm. Respect is earned. It's not forced. Please do not force children to call you a dad or to call you a mom. It will come naturally. Changing children's wardrobe and their diet. Oh my God. You're here, they're saying they keep wearing pajamas and they need to change. They need to wear, do you what? Your preference. You're making coexistence become unbearable. You're placing orders and rule of the house. From now henceforth, no one should enter with the shoes that have mud. From now henceforth, the kitchen should be arranged in... Please, please, please. You're just making situation worse. Do not do that. When a parent dies, what is left in the children's life are memory. Either of how she used or he used to do things, but most likely, and this most likely, even how they used to talk. This becomes the marking scheme that the children will use to evaluate whether you're doing right or wrong. Have you ever had children say, Mom never used to place the table there. But that is all they knew that was the right thing to be done. The memory of their parent, their gone parent. That's the memory that they are left with. So every time you keep doing something different from what they are used to, they feel like you're doing, you're doing it wrong. No, mom will not have shouted at us. He, he will never have served la, uh, dinner at 7 p.m. And what is your role? Let me give you effect of rushing out to make changes. Effect of rearranging the house. Children, depending on their age, may oppose, stating if dad was here, he wouldn't have done this and this. If mom was here, he would not have done this and this. And this makes them feel like they're taking territory. They're taking territory of where their mother or their father left through. And this causes conflict. 
making coexistence intolerable. So the effect of rearranging the house is like you feel like you're you're taking territory of where their parent used to. And this brings conflict because you will move the table from right and they will return it on left and you're not moving anywhere. Effect of removing the uh, the photos and the memory of their past parent. This is so hurting. Wow. Especially to the children because they feel like you're resenting or repairing or, or you're rejecting their lost parent. And most of them will fight for it. And you know, most of the time, the memories that they see on the wall when they see their parents, it reminds them of the love, reminds me, reminds them of how their parents was. So when you come and remove them, it seems like you want them to be forgotten, you want them to be out of their mind, and that is what causes resentment, disrespectfulness, and they will not accept you as part of their family. So the effect of removing the photo is you cause them to resent you and not even appreciate you or love you because you feel like you're replaced. You want them to be forgotten. You want their lost parent to be uh, out out of the scene. Three, demanding to be called mom and dad. As I said, respect is earned. Please earn your respect. Do not cost them. Do, do not co ask them to call you names. Oh, call me daddy. Oh, call me mommy. No, do not co ask them. It will come naturally. Naming may not be an issue. Allow yourself to give them a name. Like you say, me call me auntie. Auntie, Auntie Rachel, or call me Uncle John. Give them a name that they will. And also in your mind, allow yourself that actually it's not a point of authority. You're not losing authority because you're not a mom. No, you're understanding the state they are in. They need to adjust. And as they're adjusting, you are earning their trust. Once you earn your trust, then you get your respect. Changing children wardrobe. Sudden change of wardrobe, fragrance, Diet creates a lot of resentment because most of the memories are associated by the smell they used to experience when their parents used to change them, the goods, the gifts that their parents gave them. Maybe you find someone was given a pajama for birthday and you're here saying they should not wear that pajama. Every time you do that, you make them feel like you want their parents to be forgotten. And this creates a lot of resentment. I mean, go slowly, slowly, mama. Slowly, daddy, they will get to respect you. But when you come with all this force to change their wardrobe, to change their clothes, there's so much you're tempering with them in terms of memories created, in terms of good uh, activities they did together. Some will tell you, this swimming costume I was bought for when I was in my 18-year-old, and it has a connection with your memory. Leave it as it is. The fifth thing, placing orders and rules. Men, 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 men. Every house has its own culture. These are things, how things are done in their home. And because you're the one who have come, learn their culture. It may take time, but the effective way to get to avoid conflict and peacefully coexist, just learn their culture. The last one, do not take words personally. At times when you come in as a step parent, the, the children are hesitant to receive you. So some will say words like, hmm, you're not even my daddy, you're not even my mommy. Understand, it is important for you to get to know these children are mourning their parents and the pain may only be projected to you who seem to be replacing them. So every time you conflict with them or you throw words towards each other, you're making the coexistence unbearable. So allow yourself to not take any word just personally. Most pain are manifested in indiscipline of children. So at times when you feel like you're sending one child to go get something and they're not coming back, do not take it personally. Hmm. They're disrespecting me. They don't honor me. They don't, me. they don't see me as a parent. That is not the way. As I told you, pain in children is mostly expressed in an indiscipline. And this is what you do. You do not take like that action of indiscipline has been caused because they disrespect you. Understand they are going through mourning and they're experiencing the pain. How you address it helps or worsens the situation. Reporting the children to the familiar parent. Like if they lost a mother and they're left with a dad, you're here as Auntie Jane 
reporting. You know today Anthony did not do. You know today Jane did not do. You're losing your powers. And you're transferring that power to their familiar parent. That is not the way to do. Have a discussion and allow them to get to know, I was not happy when you did this to me. I was not happy when you did this to me. I would ask you to kindly apologize. They may or not apologize, but you have stood your ground. You will earn your respect gradually. But you're reporting, you're transferring your authority to the familiar parent and you're losing it. Making coexistence becomes unbearable. Only update your partner on exactly what happened in a day but not reporting like what did you guys do today oh today we were cooking today we were doing this but we had some conflict with so and so but we resolved that is updating not reporting children do not take children to live with their grandparent your child may experience conflict with the step parent with the current with the with the, with the children and at times coexistence become unbearable and most of the parents will resolve to Let's take them to the grandparent. My friend, you just lost it. Because they will have no connection with the current parent and they will never they will disconnect with the familiar parent. And they will start they feel like they've been abandoned. They've been thrown away. Go look for your own life. And it does not make things better. They will create resentment. They will not even ever want to see you. And even when they grow older, they will feel like we lost our mother, but I think we also lost our father in the same situation. So do not take the children to go live with. Allow the conflict that you're experiencing initially build a respectful boundary that will help you coexist peacefully. And if you follow all those steps that I've shared, for sure you'll be able to understand where are we conflicting. Is it is in changing of their diet? Is it in putting rules? Is it in demanding them to call them my, my dad or, da, or, or mom? Why are we losing it? And when you get to know where you're getting it wrong, you'll be able to rectify. And if these children are still in pain of mourning, it's important you take them for counseling, where they go pour out their heart and pour out their frustration. Make sure you're not leaving your spouse out of this. Play as a team. In this situation, playing a good, bad cop does not work. You need to play as a team such that the familiar parent and the step parent will speak from the same rhythm, will speak from the same voice towards the children. They will love them unconditionally. This will help the children to get to know we are not conflicting. We are as a team. This is all for today. My name is Rachel Bogwa. Till next time. Bye-bye.